come on in. This is where my volunteers come in and I say, how are you, Mary? And they put the food right there or in the refrigerator for me. I think you'll like my house. I certainly do. And your plate collection is so neat. Isn't that gorgeous? I have some way back to before the World War One. Really? Yeah, World War One. Wow. <laughs> And then out there is a wonderful collection of Bob's cast iron, or if you see the anvil. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's neat. Yeah, we'll call around a minute because we have uh, old, old tools. We have anvil tools here somewhere, and so it's a complete set if you want to use it. Here's an old plowshare. See, all these things don't look very important until you start to talk about them. And I love to talk about them. So come on through the, this way. He won every one of those and had them pinned on him. This is our son. Uh, so we have two vets. David made a round trip to Vietnam. That's this one. And here's Bob in World War II. What date were you married? Uh, March 24th, 1946. Gosh, that seems like a long time, you gals. But you weren't <laughs> even thought of then at that time. And I enjoy being older, you know. If I can locate my time and not be a rambler, why, it's, there's a lot of information I can give you. Yeah. Oh, this will be of, of some degree of uh, charm to you. We're <laughs> in, in the process of writing my obituary. We, and a good friend, she's got a laptop, you know. We've got all the, uh, oh, there'll be two or three paragraphs, maybe even more, you know. And then I will, um, talk to her at some length about what I did after I retired. I was still driving. And my goodness, what a bunch of stuff I was into. Uh, genealogy, so big. Astrology, you know, civil rights. Uh, I've never been a person who just sits around and vegetates. Thank goodness. Uh, Bob retired from uh, hmm, Georgia Pacific, which is now Swanson Brothers. Um, after 43 years of uh, getting his job back after the war was over, and he worked eight to five every day. But we planned the house in 1972, and we've just been very happy to pay off the mortgage and sit here on fixed income with people like you to help us. Thank you. When Paul was about 11, my youngest, uh -huh. I decided I was going back to school. The woman's movement was just sort of starting, you know, in that turn of the decade, 1970, mm -hmm. right around there. Mm -hmm. So I went back to the university and completed my degree in uh, counseling mm -hmm. and was a professional counselor for quite a number of years. Was there a specific um, event or turning point for you that made you decide and we need to call and ask for That help. was when uh, my driver's license expired. Uh -huh. Bob's driver's license uh, was also expiring. We knew that we could uh, renew them, but we knew that we knew that we would probably be a hazard on the road. I wish more people knew that. I know 93-year-old people that are still driving, you know. Maybe they don't know about the facilities that will be offered to you if you just tell somebody you need a little help. Yeah. That's a moment of pride. You don't like yeah. to say that, you know. I'm sure it's a hard call to make. Yeah. So this is where I get just, uh, you know, just a little bit annoyed with myself that even though I'm telling you how wonderful it is, I feel a little bit confided, confined, you know. And I think, you know, that's kind of a feeling that people have, is they have to give up certain rights and responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And certainly mine was a matter of driving. Mm -hmm. You know, they kind of bring sunshine with them. There's never a time that they don't smile and you tell them goodbye and you anchor yourself for the day. And it's because of that interplay between you and that volunteer, whoever it is, it comes up the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. I adore it. You're still part of the community. When I retired some 13 years ago, I actually 13 years ago today, <laughs> uh, I uh, was kind of interested in finding something to maybe help give back. 
to the community and and I remembered uh, Meals on Wheels and so I contacted them and they were more than willing to have another volunteer. And you're just such an anchor to me. Uh, you know, it gets to be 1120 and they're thereabouts and I'll say, must be time for Meals on the Wheels, you know. Hey Bob, Meals on Wheels will be here pretty soon. And you know, and you're important to us. What do you think your lives would look like? How would it be different if you didn't have Meals on Wheels? Well, I could certainly survive, but it's more pleasant if you have you part of my support network. I appreciate you guys. How would it be different? I doubt seriously if I'd ever be in a home. I just, this is my type of living. I know where the light switches are, you know. I know when the sun's going to be real pretty in the front yard and where to put the tomatoes in the backyard. It must be really dreadful for people who have to downsize. Hopefully I'll never have to do that. But you never know from one day to the next, do you? Making all his faces. <laughs> See, look up. at him. Isn't that look something? at that face. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, he's laughing yeah. about something so secret and so wonderful. Yeah. And sharing it with mom. Oh.